So this must be the buyout. We do this every Friday, and we encourage people who have, especially have uh, watched uh, our Wisdom Fetty, um, what do we call it? Show. Show. All mm -hmm. right. To, to come on in and talk about what they've seen, what their reactions are, ask questions. That doesn't mean we have answers. Mm -hmm. But uh, asking questions is always good. So we, we're happy to have with us our our trusted Margarita Quistrolotus in a sort of auxiliary uh, tobacco, as well as a guild of wisdom, and good friend, Christina Sundstrom, who is- And we have Hans in, the, mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. the audience. He said he is the opposite of an expert on relationships. That's why I come in and talk about it, yeah. okay? We'll fix you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Margarita, you are out you only, to be fixed. I don't know, maybe you... <laughs> I don't oh, want to. You know what? Yeah. No. No. He's not ready for that. <laughs> He's not <laughs> old enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is. Okay. Here I am. You, you insisted. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will help it go down the drain for you and you will beg for help. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Get right. some money. <laughs> All right. Welcome, Hans. So I uh, want to ask some questions, uh, and that is, how do we separate without pain? Uh, is any one of you, uh, or in the audience, willing to share something? What, how uh, to separate without pain? <laughs> Go ahead, Hans. <laughs> no, me of all people. I I, war I warned you. I warned you before that I'm not. Great. I'm like I said. I mean, I am 37 years old, and of those th 37 years, I think I have spent 35 and a half as a single, <laughs> being single. <laughs> so I really. Um, I don't know all this, uh, these talks, and, and it's funny that I'm following all these talks, you know, on, on relationship. There seems to be some fascination for me on, on the subject. Um, it's, uh, I was really moved today by this uh, uh, um, session, everything that uh, Catherine said. Uh, it just, um, it made me very thoughtful and I'm a more bit in a, bit, in a curious learning mode at the moment <laughs> uh you know willing to question my the beliefs that i'm holding <laughs> around the, uh, all of this and um, so i'm a bit humbled and introspective and not in a very communicative like sharing mode at the moment so maybe if one of you guys <laughs> wants to go ahead and i just listen for a change <laughs> well, well hans it's it like this if you've been a single this length of time, yeah. is is it a minute opportunity for you to actually um, broach that if you have the desire to have a relationship? You know, mm. that's the case, right? Uh, if, if someone is a little bit, I don't say that you're afraid, but that there is a tiny little thing in there that holds you back from actually reaching out to the other person that you might want to get to know and then you back off and then and, and then you don't need to integrate mm. yes yeah, it's, it's it's um i'm sure there's something to that and i have like we all do my own like childhood what is did she call how did she call it the original I don't know, but I mean this well-known pattern out of psych <laughs> psychology, mm -hmm. you know, that we all have some like uh, experiences that really made an imprint and are, you know, we are functioning by those patterns uh, ever after. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I do, I mean, it's, um, I do have huge abandonment issues. Like I have, uh, um, I mean, at least from my childlike perspective, I was abandoned by my mother when I, when I was five years old. I mean, she went, she left for work, and she never came back. And I'm uh, have uh, under now doubt that this has made an uh, 
impression on my little uh, psyche and on my patterns and unconscious behaviors around relationships. I'm I'm under no illusion, <laughs> you know, in that in that regard. Um, so, but actually, most of my life, I had since early childhood, actually. Um, I, I have this like craving and longing and uh, that there is the one out there and that, you know, if only I would find him in my case, uh, everything would be uh, sorted and life would be beautiful. That never really worked out. <laughs> and um, only recently, I think maybe about <laughs> two years ago, something changed in my inner direction and I'm no I don't know if I'm making a fool of myself or maybe just uh but my sense is that I over the last two years I did not feel that urge anymore. So I'm not sure now is it like some sort of like a resignation or does it also have to do with a lot of work I did on myself and I think it's both in a way. I mean it's like this illusory idea of you know finding the special romantic partner i just can't believe that anymore i mean not only because it hasn't worked i mean because i did start relationships and that i didn't really get far over the initial phase but um i am very familiar with those projections you know meeting people and then suddenly being all like crazy about them and having this idea and projecting everything uh, on them and then being very disappointed when I really got to know them and <laughs> you know it was not their fault it was not their fault you know? <laughs> actually it was almost uh a, you know almost a crime or aggressive I mean I had just I just put this thing on them and then they could never live up to that but of course I mean and um do you yeah. do you do you see really that it's up to you right you put exactly. something on yeah. them right Exactly, exactly. And that's what resonates so much uh, mm -hmm. with me, with everything Catherine said, and also what was being pointed to in the other uh, sessions with the other uh, authors and teachers, that what I um, resonate with a lot, uh, and even more so the older I get, is this idea of assuming full responsibility myself, you know, for the patterns that I find myself in. And it's just, uh, I just don't buy into these things that the world is an evil place and everybody is fucked up and here to hurt me. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Like, I really feel that, you know, up to me uh, to look deeper into what's going on here. <laughs> so, you know, Hans, yeah. uh, uh, ex, um, Rain says, oh, Hans, that is such a huge thing to be able to sit back and question the belief you've had held for such a long time. Kudos to you. The, oh, I, you. It is amazing, you know? <laughs> so you, what are yes. you going to do about this now? What are you going to do about it now? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing is, at the moment, I'm not, I'm a bit confused. So I'm not very clear, like, what do I want now? I mean, do do I want... <laughs> <laughs> to find uh to, to be in a relationship or not i think maybe i'm still a bit busy like you know diving into my own psyche <laughs> diving into my own psyche but then again i also think you know i it shouldn't be a project of mm -hmm. first becoming perfect you know uh i think you know like mark and heidi pointed too many times as well being in a relationship itself is a school of growth and development so I think a lot, a lot of the issues are going to come up <laughs> once you get into the whole mess of it. <laughs> well, it's dipping so. your head in the mud, right? Oh, Sorry? It's like me too. And it's yeah, like... Can you see it? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's like me saying, oh, Mar Margarita, <laughs> just interrupt all the time. <laughs> you it. don't arrive in time. She <laughs> thinks you can not say anything. <laughs> okay. I, you, you know, I'll, I'll do a relationship when I'm good at it, you know? I, it's like me saying that um, I'll speak Italian yeah. after I get good at it, you know? You know, and not before. We, 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 we get into these things in little ways, you know, and then test them out and, and then maybe have to back off, mm. uh, but we take something with. And if we have the ability to be conscious of what's happening, along the way 
then these experiences are not wasted. You know, uh, goodness, I mean, how many relationships have we had before? Yeah. yeah. You know? And you were saying before that um, about the projections, no? that we fall in love with the projection mm -hmm. of the other person, and then we are disappointed that the other person is not um, what we put into them. And this is on. on them, yeah. This is exactly when we talk right. about how to separate without pain, that we get, take over the responsibility that what we believe the other person should be for right. us was our belief, that we didn't really see the other per person as mm -hmm. the individual they are, but we, we cover that with, mm -hmm. uh, with our own ideas. And uh, then it takes a whole lot of pain away because you don't have to say, oh, he has uh, cheated me because, uh, you know, he is not as he promised to mm -hmm. be, blah, blah. No, mm -hmm. that's you thought that they were in this way, you yes. know, and not, mm -hmm. not them. They were what they were, you know, you, you mm -hmm. don't really have an influence on in what they are, mm -hmm. but you have an influence on what you believe and what other people uh, say. And what Catherine said so nicely, when you buy into your story. Yes, well, <laughs> wow. I agree to that. Yeah. But you see, it's a, then, it's, a, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. At the moment, that's what's a bit of a confusion to me because, you know, even though that in the beginning, I think most of the time that happens, people meet and there is projection is happening. And that, but that is how they first, you know, get together. And then of course that phase ends and then you have to work on things and get real and all this. But what happens, like I often feel now in my case, um, if I catch myself very early <laughs> in the process of meeting somebody and I just realize, oh my God, all these projections, and then I don't actually even start, start anything with that person because I'm catching my projections <laughs> before that. So... Uh, so I wonder, you know, what is, um, because I think there is now at this stage, there is not, there's different reasons. I mean, when I was younger, there was a lot of avoidance going on and a lot of unconsciousness and, and, and all that. And I'm sure there's still a good dose of that <laughs> around. But um, now I often also feel that the people I meet, they're beautiful people, but I know I don't want to be in a relationship with them. So um, I haven't over the last, you know, I'd say like two years or longer, I, I just haven't met anybody that I would have been willing to, you know, do all the work with <laughs> that you guys <laughs> have been doing and are still doing. So, yeah. So I think, but it's also what, no, uh, I yeah, was sorry. Hmm? Speak. I was thinking about you say you don't even uh, begin anything when you see your projections. Hmm. I think this is good. But on the <laughs> other side, Sam, and you could also begin, begin something, but yeah. on a different level. Begin the project of get to know this person, hmm. you know, without entering into an intimate relationship, hmm. just to see maybe uh, your projections, maybe something is right of it. Maybe the person is you know, worthwhile. Mm. And you know what I mean? I, I don't want you to, to kill a rela possible relationship because you see that your projections are going on. Mm. The other person might be, uh, mm. as you see mm. them, you know, mm. just uh, yeah. see also that. The reality check, let's say. Mm. Allow yourself the reality check. Yes. Well, but I think uh, um, totally. But also I remember something that... Um, uh, Margarita said uh, last time or the time before, like, I think, Margarita, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you currently are a happy single. And uh, no, I think. I'm not single, I'm whole. You I'm not okay, single. Yeah. I'm whole. Single. Okay. I am okay. complete. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but okay, but you, you are without a romantic partner at the moment. I do have a romantic partner that's sitting right here. Okay, okay, great. Yes, but I think that's a good, I think that's a good, st I mean, I think for me, I think I'm going to try like dancing a bit this paradox of at the same time, keep just 
enjoying <laughs> being with myself and yeah. uh, finding fulfillment in that at, at the same time remain, remain open for encounters to happen you know <laughs> um because i have really started i mean over the last years i really enjoy living with myself it's not i'm not in a sad desperate lonely place uh it's uh so I think it's just a beautiful place to be. So, I, you know. <laughs> uh, you, know what? you know what? I think we first need to learn to enjoy living with ourselves yeah, yes, before yes. we really in a, in a good relationship. Because mm -hmm. otherwise we are always needy and want the other person oh, to yeah. fill the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, we need to, to, to uh, address Christina here. What do you want to say? Yes, Christina, sorry. <laughs> it's like a private therapy session here for Hans. <laughs> Christina, I, I have been wondering. Yeah. Uh, did you watch the show? Yeah. I, Were you able to see yes, the show? Yes. yes. And, and I know that. You're not far away from a long relationship. Yeah. And she marriage. comes from Cas uh, Feminine Power and yeah. Yeah. we did the course mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. we meet, you know? so, so. I, well, that, that was very helpful, I'm certain. Yeah. But you haven't done the conscious uncoupling formally. You know, yeah. I wondered. As you were watching, the, let her oh, speak. No, no. <laughs> you don't interrupt her. Let her speak. Ah, uh, you okay? I, I, for the first time in my life, I have had now I think six months living by my own, uh, happy, very happy living by my own. And I think you, Heidi, said last time or some time before that the first relationship we have to build is with ourselves. So Hans was talking so beautiful about himself now, about yourself, because it's, it's, it depends on how we relate to each to one, us, ourselves. And I have had two marriages, and I acted at, almost at the same uh, thing with both of them totally relying on them. They have had to de decide everything. So I now finally live happy trying to decide all things by myself without, without asking one single person as I did before. So I want to stay, be whole. I'm, I'm on the path to be whole, so I don't need anyone, but I, I want to to be out of this friendship, yes, I want to have friends. So I think this, what you are talking about also, that we, we start a relationship as friends and it will develop to something else. So it's not so, so scary when we will meet friends as, as, we, as we would meet some, someone to, to love as a lover. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, oh, yeah. are you open to meet some lover? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This this conscious this is calling in the one. I think Hans needs to go this course calling in the one. But I'm not sure I want to do that yet. <laughs> because then we are open. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the conscious uncoupling course really i mean now it's the book out i did the coaches training about three years ago and there was no book out yet yeah. it was only on, on on teaching with catherine and now we have the the material to work on and this is really really good to do it because i would recommend not to begin a new relationship mm. while you are still let's say in pain or reactive uh, to the, the previous partner when there is still or one previous partner or even to, to, to parents, mm -hmm. you know, when you're still in <laughs> something, when they say the wrong word, that needs some work still to be done because you, otherwise you will bring it in the new relationship. And then uh, 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 separation becomes more, more probable 
when when you bring this in the new relationship it is always like bringing the old burden into you know the rucksack with the old stuff and put it on top of the new one so, so i think it's really important to do that work before when we want a really exceptional relationship because otherwise we got get yeah. the same you get the same thing as before and it doesn't depend on the wrong partner and you said you, the dream of the prince charming no uh, this is a different has different how do you say is is a different level this is sort of fantasy mm -hmm. but you will find the one but it's not what you think it is <laughs> let's see she was looking for the one and she found me <laughs> 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 How about that? <laughs> but Mark, you are the one. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. Yeah. You know. Yes, I am the one. Yeah, and, and uh, for for everybody, the one looks different or mm -hmm. is different. You know, that is is really. Uh, I I think normally the one is not what we have dreamt in our young young life the one is something which is developing as christina says no the out of a friendship out of knowing each other and then you you know you see oh yeah this is a person i want to spend maybe not the whole life but at least a significant part of our life we, this is my, for me the the other what catherine talked about that we think it should hold for the whole life you know in the catholic idea of marriages but she said when in the future we get 140 years old or something do you really want to live 120 <laughs> years with the same person i'm not even halfway <laughs> through that <laughs> no, <I'm not> either. <laughs> that's good news good news oh yeah Okay, Christina, still to you, because he asked you the question about the separation and how yeah. you managed that. But, but, yes, I, I, I had succeeded quite well because I had wanted this for quite a long time and, and I so feel my, my own responsibility why it went not so, went so well. Because I started the re relationship with too much depending on me. I, I admired him and put him on a pedestal and, and made him much bigger than I felt myself. So I, I, I'm very much responsible to what happened. And as, as I started to, to want it to, to stand up for myself and, may, and be, find myself uh, as a whole person, it, it didn't work together with him because I had, I had, uh, I had uh, make him I couldn't take my space together with him because I have had given him too much before. It was too much work to take the space I needed. And it's so clear that, that I did the right thing because now I have a little, little apartment be, compared to what we had. But I, this is my space and I can do anything I want with it and no one, no one can disturb it. And as lo as, well, and yeah. I, have to, I have to enjoy my own space and myself first. And then I can open up. Uh, but I'm not close. You know, I and close. when I don't, I don't meet anyone, I haven't met anyone I, I should, I, I, that I'm interested in since I divorced. It's one year now. Yeah, when, you know. when, you, when you give too much space at the other person from the beginning, yeah. it establishes sort of the rule yes. that yes. I have so much and the other so much yeah. and then yeah. what he did in his life it gave him already the the yeah. status of something somebody special mm -hmm. so for you it would have been like climbing the himalaya or something to to uh to to find your 50 percent space yeah. let's say you know yeah. because uh, he, his position was probably already so like this even for other people not only for you so yeah and it costs a lot of energy and yeah but and probably you wouldn't be able to be so self whole inside the relationship you probably needed to be really really yourself and do your own and probably he could not have shrunk down to a size you know that would allow you 
to fill the other half. No, maybe, no, maybe but, not. But not together with me because he, he had a, a woman friend who could take him in the right way. She, she could uh, interrupt him and do, do things uh, and say things and, and she had a, a great a bigger power. And she was more perfect to him, but they had, I don't think they have any relationship like that, but they was good to each other, more than I to him. But he, he didn't think so. He didn't think so. So he- So nice to see you again. <laughs> How are you? Nice to meet you, Christina. Yeah, nice nice to, meet to meet you too, yeah. Hello, Rain. <laughs> It's a very, very interesting okay. conversation. Really, yeah. really interesting. And I think it's such a really, it's an integral, you know, as as, as everybody was, Hans was sharing, Christina was sharing, and, you know, Heidi and Margarita, I kept thinking about this. I don't know why, but it kept coming up in my brain that, you know, we're taught, um, we're, we're brought up, we're taught to look externally, look outside of ourselves for who we are. Mm. So what people tell us who we are, that's that's who we sort of start going, okay, well, that's what they're saying, so that's who I am. Mm. And I think it's a really, really amazing yeah. opportunity to sit back and discard all of that and decide for yourself who you are you know, what you like, what you, you know, what, what attracts you, what maybe doesn't attract you, those kinds of things. And it can, it can be a very, you know, sometimes kind of painful experience because you can realize certain things that were said to you that those aren't true. Like, that's not me. I don't feel like that. That's not what I like. That's not, you know, where I'm, you know, that's not where I am, you know? And so, but at the same time, it's also freeing. It's immensely freeing to kind of just go, ah, oh, you know, everything just opens up. Everything really just opens up. So, and then it's just a matter of going forward slowly and feeling into what, you know, works for you and, and you know, what you like and how you want to move forward. But it, it I, I, and I just absolutely love the way Margarita says, um, you know, I am, I am whole. You know, because there's sort of this um, thing in society that if you're single, there's something wrong with you, <laughs> which I find really funny because most of the, you know, really happy people, really healthy people that I meet, they're usually single. And I think, I don't know if it, that's because they have time to spend with themselves, to get to know themselves, to love themselves, to, you know, practice these things more. I'm not sure if that's the reason why, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's you know, they don't have distractions of, you know, of a partner where they have to, you know, always kind of be moving back and forth between what does the partner want? Is that what I want? Is that me? Is that gonna work, you know, and that kind of thing. So having said that, I think uh, Heidi and Mark are very happy. <laughs> uh, uh. the wholeness the wholeness and i think uh, i was too i felt really whole before I, I i found him you know and i think it is needed and as we we are sort of pioneering a new way of being in relationship we we, we cannot do this or very difficult some couples uh, succeed to give each other the space to become whole, you know, from the very beginning. But normally we need our own space and independence to, to learn that. For them, happily come together with somebody else differently as it was before. It is not the same thing anymore, you know. The the roles are different, they are the the, the, the way of communication is different very much different but first we have to go through all this crap you know and understand what we <laughs> there must be a faster way easier way there will be an easier way. way because the young people are already growing with a different well, consciousness yeah, look at him <laughs> look at him. he, in he this really pisses me <laughs> off <laughs> Because he needed to 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 be 
60 something yeah. for to, to understand a little bit in his that's because it's this generation we he grew up i'm a little younger than him but i still grew up you know like christina said i went in my marriage and i was a student at university but i thought oh i don't really need to work because my husband uh, you know it's not my my um, not really my job. I work because it's, you know, it's uh, fancy. But we still grew up in this idea that as a woman, you are provided for by the man. And the men have still, many more than women, the idea that they uh, need to be the provider. And then when the woman goes out and works for herself, has her own money, they say, oh, and what am I in this relationship? Like a cute cat. So, oh, God. <laughs> We're finding out. <laughs> yeah, this is a moment. Oh, look at that here. Oh, 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 my, <laughs> my cat's over there, oh. right there, and he has a little box. He sleeps in. Oh, my God. It's, it's a cat oh, invasion. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we can <laughs> <we're laughs> <cat -oriented. laughs> They don't have the problem. They don't even create too many relationships. There is this one now who is sometimes friendly with a red and white one and they lick each other's, but they can also really. They don't think about good communication as we do. Life is nice and easy. Yes, but I think it's all, it's what. What Catherine said about, about oh, also she said for oh, some of these things we don't even have uh, the language yet, um, you know. Also for this consciousness okay. where these thoughts come come from. I mean, so many things she pointed out to is. I mean, it's already just it's only being born like over the last few uh, decades. In many ways, things were so much easier before in those little limited or more basic concepts of relationships like that our parents and grandparents and people before it just uh you just didn't have to question all these things in many ways i think it made things so much easier <laughs> so here we are in new and very confusing times and uh, uh yeah it's uh it's a challenge uh, it's a big adventure too do you have a story to share about how to separate out pain? Mm. Well, I think mine has been such a, uh, I've had many and they've all, at the same time, they've also been gradual and sort of, um, I'm an intuitive as well. So I've kind of been, um, you know, it's almost like dealing with two kind of things at the same time per se. So, um, I think it's, you know, I think the more I grow into it, um, and, and maybe that has something to do with, um, you know, taking time to spend with yourself, to get to know yourself. And also, um, you know, because it's really been, you know, really been in the last year that I've really come to embrace, really understand what intuitive meant and embrace it. And you know, because a lot of times I would get message, I would get messages through dreams or different things about people. And I would, you know, because I've been told for, you know, my whole life, dreams don't mean anything or no intuition is no, no nothing, you know, kind of a thing, right? Um, and I found out sometimes the hard way, you no, know, that's, it was right. <laughs> it was absolutely 100% right. And I think it really goes back to, um, you know, really like basically falling in love with yourself and getting to know yourself and your own gifts and your own vision and, um, you know, the things that you see are possible. Um, you know, it really, it really kind of aligns you more with your passion and your gifts. That's what I find the whole um, journey has led me towards, right? And that it's a, it's a choice how painful you do want to make it in some regards. Sometimes you, sometimes you actually have to go through that. You really do. You know, it's almost like you know, like 
breaking down a wall. It has to be, you know, it has to be, you have to feel that wall getting hammered down. You have to, you know, experience all those stones, you know, crashing to the ground and the rubble being there and going, okay, you know, that was, you know, that was traumatic, but okay, where did, you know, it, there's no wall there now. <laughs> you know, so something's completely opened up now. So it's, um, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I wouldn't say it's, I would, you know, I, I, I just find it really, really interesting that we're off doing things like exploring space and, you know, different things like that when we are really um, amazing, amazing beings. And there's so much to us. There's so much we can do. And there's so, uh, you know, a lot of these things are just, you know, starting to get tapped into, starting to be explored. And it's, you know, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think it's absolutely fantastic, but it's almost like it has to be painful for people to kind of break out of that old mode of what other people think of you, caring what other people think of you, caring about what things they're trying to put on you, whatever their beliefs or their values or whatever it is, to then, you know, just owning and loving and going with your own journey yeah. and being comfortable in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I want to name I mean, uh, uh, get to the comments here. That Margarita, uh, I would like to talk about what uh, Yeah Viston. I don't know your real name, and he said first, but women have so many duties to the man, also that she can never give it back. And I asked him where he's coming from, and I said I'm from Albania, border with Greece, and he is a Muslim. Uh, and I uh, uh, wrote back uh, that I understand now because what we see that in Muslim cultures, the women are not yet uh, in the same situation as we are in the, let's say, in the Western world. The, the yeah, women, they have duty towards men. They have yeah. much more duties uh, mm -hmm. towards men. Why in our cultures, we, I would say fortunately, mm -hmm. have liberated us a little bit from these duties. We still have duties of let's say, love each other, respect each other, but we don't have these traditional duties anymore. And what Rain said before, we don't have to care anymore about what others said, of what your mother-in-law says, how you should behave as a woman, you know, we, we don't have to to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. We listen to mother-in-law and say, okay, that's your idea, but my idea is different. Mm -hmm. And I think in Muslim culture that it's not yet the case, but it will come too. Mm -hmm. This is a natural way of evolution of societies. So maybe in 10 years, maybe in 100 years, mm -hmm. <laughs> sooner or later. And now with the Internet, when women can see how women in other countries live, there will come a, a liberation movement like we in the Western world had in the 70s, 60s, 70s. You know, that will come. And men, you better get prepared and get yourself uh, attractive enough that the women want to stay with you and not because of duty that they have to stay with you. Okay. Mm. Are you well, attractive I, enough for me? I hope so. I'm working on my hair a little. But the duty, uh, Heidi, the, 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 the duty, I think uh, um, Catherine pointed that out too. Um, I think the duty goes both ways too. You know, when in, in societies where people don't depend on each other or where women uh, don't depend on the husband's income and material, you know, uh, security, that uh, is, like Catherine said, freeing both the woman and the man because maybe if I'm a responsible man and live in a society right. where my wife depends on me for her material survival, then maybe even if I would want to separate from her, maybe I wouldn't do that because then she would be left alone and uh, would have no uh, means of survival uh, on, on by herself. So I think... Um, is uh, is uh, goes goes both ways, of course, and uh, and um, speaking of traditional worldviews, um, we do have a lot of those still <laughs> around, also in, in in Germany and European countries. Maybe not to that degree anymore, that uh, quantity, but um, I'd say, like even in my own family, um, the roles are 
<laughs> pretty traditional still. Um, and depending, you know, very much on mm -hmm. if people live in the countryside or in the big cities or how much education they got and if they're very religious maybe or not. Uh, um, but I think those patterns are still to be witnessed <laughs> all around us. Uh, yeah. And there's much beauty in those patterns too, you know, I think. No, it's just like, I mean, th this time we didn't talk yeah. much about the mm -hmm. integral map, you know, like we have many times before talked about Ken Wilber's integral theory and spiral dynam dynamics. And I think that's what Heidi was referring to a little bit too, these different levels of emergent worldviews. Um, in the more traditional worldviews, there is uh, there's a lot of beautiful beauty and dignity that often, you know, some of it gets lost as well when we move up the ladder and then from an integral perspective we have to go and re-embrace the pearls let's say or the jewels of all those layers of de development so um, you know I can sometimes understand very well why some people coming from a more traditional uh, background are very suspicious about this modern world and they look and you see but what do you have to offer? Everybody is getting divorced and everybody is fighting and everything is. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I think from that perspective, it doesn't sometimes seem like a step up. Like uh, it seems like everything is deteriorating, <laughs> you know, going down the drain. So, yeah, it's. So mm -hmm. can you explain why it is not going down the drain? Drain, not train. Drain. The drain uh, when we uh, go into that direction. Why it's not going uh, down the drain? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, the way I look at it is always yes. Things do become more complicated, and uh, if we get into a position of assuming responsibility for ourselves, things become more bumpy, <laughs> like we cannot just easily follow the uh, examples of our grandmothers and parents and just do the same. In In a way, it's very limiting, but in the other, that's what I pointed to before. It's very nice and easy because people tell us how it goes and we just do it and everybody agrees on it and all the romantic movies show us the same thing and <laughs> everything is so nicely reaffirming and... Uh, so once you step out of that and you have to, you know, make up your own mind and assume responsibility for your choices, you also become free to commit many mistakes <laughs> and learn the hard way. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, more options become available, you know. Uh, you can still choose to live in a, you know, in a more or less traditional relationship if you wish to do so, but it will be, you will do so in a more conscious and aware way. And maybe some things will have to be renegotiated <laughs> if your partner is up to it as well. And some relationships uh, will probably end. Like, like you said, Heidi, if one partner keeps developing and the other is happy with where they were at before, then probably in the long run, <laughs> you know, uh, there is not much future. This was with my first husband. Yeah, my first husband, it was, I married with 19 and finally separated with 32. But along the way, when I grew up, he began to hang up pictures of me when I was about 28, 29, pictures of me when I was 17. He just didn't want to see the reality of me growing up. He wanted me to stay as I was, you know, and uh, that just doesn't work anymore. When evolution begins, we, we, we cannot just put, <laughs> I mean, you can, but uh, you pay hard for it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Rain, you wanted to say something, I think. Oh, I was just going to say it's... um. Yeah, it's, it, it would very much be more comfortable to go along, you know. It's always much more comfortable to go along with the norm and do what everybody else is doing. It's very much more comfortable and socially acceptable and all those, you know, nice words, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, but it's really not authentic. It's really not authentic. And to me, you know, um, you know, I, I believe we're, um, and I don't say the word spiritual often, but I believe we're, we're spiritual belief, uh, beings having a human experience here. And the only way we're going to experience things is if we, is if we try them, is if we, if we go ahead and, and do those things. Because those things are going to tell us more about ourselves. They're going to give us more information. They're going to be so helpful. Um, you know, the more you know yourself, the more, the easier things become, you know, going along. Then you're not doing something because it's expected of you or people want you to, or this is the way it's always been done. So this is the way you need to keep doing it, you know, whatever. And sure, some people are not going to like it. You know, they're not going to like it. But then at the same time, um, you know, you know, it's a matter, it, to me, it's a matter of Quality over quantity, I suppose. That's that's the main thing to me is quality over quantity. So the relationships you do have, they're just so brimming with beauty and you know quality, understanding, <coughs> compassion, all of these beautiful things that we want in relationships. But we're not going to get them when we stay with the norm. You know, most likely we're not going to get them because we can't. We haven't freed ourselves yet. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's sort of one of those, uh, it's sort of one of those things, you know, it, it takes a brave, you know, you have to be brave, <laughs> but, um, but the rewards are so, they're just, they're just, I mean, I, I, I couldn't even begin to um, list off the, the rewards, you know, it's just, uh, they're just so many, so many. Um, I don't, and a lot, I don't think we have words for <laughs> in the English language. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I mean, that's, I, that's why I'd like to really, uh, yeah. I love to encourage people to do that. Absolutely love to encourage people to do that because it's, you know, it's, it's the road less traveled, but it is the road. So it's so much more exciting. It's so much more authentic. It's so much more, um, it, it, it's you know it's just, it's more it's so much more it's so rich it's just absolutely rich you know <laughs> you know and when and when I think back to you know when I was listening to what yeah. everybody was telling me who I was and what I was and you know how to do things and you know all of that kind of stuff it just it's it seems like that was in black and white you know kind of gray you know mm. and then when I started deciding that no you yeah. know I think I'm going to decide what really works for me you know and I, I get that that may mean the end of certain relationships that may mean the end of me thinking about myself a certain way which that was actually harder than no longer dealing with those people or whatever it was right it was actually harder for me to wrap my my head around no, that's not who you are. You know, just because you've been told that's who you are, it doesn't mean that is who you are. You know, you ultimately decide who you are. And uh, so it's, it's yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. You. I, I held up my finger. I held up my finger, White Rain. Just because I thought you wanted to say something at one point. Yeah, I wanted to say that what Catherine said, that we are, our biology is uh, hardwired to want to keep everything the same. But on the same thing, our biology is also hardwired for curiosity. So uh, as long as we're in a traditional worldview, we can stay the same. And it's even uh, rewarded to be the same. But now we are able to go over into the curiosity modality. And um, some of us have a problem to be supported by that. But, you know, ever more there is support outside it's that we support each other to allow us to be curious about the world, about life, and to find out what it really is. I mean, it has been on the beginning of science the same thing. But science is science. And uh, humans are different. So we are exploring 
humanity in many ways by using ourselves <laughs> to explore ourselves. And this is a, the task what Catherine also said in the show, that is what's the next step in humanity, what we need to do to, to learn about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And not because it's me or it's you or it's you or you, but because we are part of humanity. And by exploring ourselves, we get a good impression what humans are about, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, this is wonderful speech, you know, and I have been, you know, engaged in this process for a long time <clears throat> also. But I have in back of my head, this is all a product of this point in history. We needed this level of economic prosperity and uh, education and, and all these co-developments that put together a world where we could, in a sense, indulge in this kind of experimentation. You know, and this is so unique and the world isn't always so nice. You know, we are faced with terrible crises, economic crises, ecological crises, you know, to name a couple things. You know, how will we react when world conditions, if world conditions change, so that we can no longer be so concerned about self-development? <laughs> and we've got to be concerned about working with each other, getting along with one another, and That's making survival. sure we have the necessities that we need to live. Uh, what happens when the money runs out? This funny money that isn't real anyway. I, I don't want to rain on a parade here. <laughs> I just want to not forget mm. that there's other possible world. Yeah. It tends yeah. to go down equally. Yeah. As we, I mean, history has shown uh, uh, development went up and then boom, down mm -hmm. again and up and, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, we say, you know, two steps up and one and three quarters down. And yeah. then <laughs> another two up and one and three. Yeah. At the end, it's an, it's an upward. Mm -hmm. Also, we are going down. I just want to um, uh, acknowledge Deborah, who asked the question about the seven, about years? The seven years. Yes, circle. I think it is in um, the Steiner how, how anthroposophical um, teaching that, that life is seven years circles. Uh -huh. And I think it makes sense. Maybe it's not always seven years, but the development goes in certain chunks where you, while, while you think you almost don't learn anything and make <laughs> trung, you, you jump to the next level and then it goes. We call it in integral speech, we, we call it translation. No, mm -hmm. we, we get comfortable on, we learn all the skills we need in a certain level of our development. For instance, children learn how to speak, to walk and all the necessary things. And then they jump into the next one. They have mastered mm -hmm. that and there are new challenges and they get comfortable with that and they jump. And the same thing is with adults. And the jumps you know? are called transformation. And we have been comfortable in... And the jumps are called transformation. Mm -hmm. And the jumps are the transformation. What happens on the one level is the translation, as you pointed Go out. Ahead. I didn't... And, the jumps and then yeah. moving up to the next, this jump is then would be something transformative. When there is the, the 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 rules of the games yeah. change altogether, <laughs> basically. Mm. Okay, we got three more years before we have to jump. <laughs> yeah. We can just get better at this. In more. anthroposophical teaching, you, st you stop, I think, with sixty-four or something. Oh, oh no, we <laughs> don't want to stop. Life that doesn't sound longer. right. We want that to go ahead. Right. Oh, further and further. Mm. <laughs> Okay, we are here for an hour now, and I think we wrap it up. It was so nice that everybody came in, yeah. Christina, Rain, Margarita, and Hans again. It's so lovely to talk with you and other people in the audience. Nice that you stuck, stick, stuck, stuck, stuck with us. Stuck with us, yeah. Stuck with us, <laughs> and that you asked the questions, and it's it's really inspiring. Yep. It's and great. see you oh, next week. Thank you for letting me. And you we will have. Uh, thank you, everybody. I really enjoyed this. Thanks. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Yeah.